Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Get Wheel. Uh, I am in the sunny south of France um, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to shoot a video. This video is going to be all about the stuff that you need to prepare. So if you're, if you're going to France, um, the stuff that you need to take with you, uh, whether it be do you need green cards, whether it's connected with your insurance, what happens with your driving license, and I will be putting in the links below um, you know, all the necessary information so you can find all that out um, and the stuff that you need to take with you in the back of the car. I will also be doing a bit of driving. I'm going to put some cameras up so you can sort of see what's going on as I'm driving. How I deal with, so for example, space. This is a UK car, so obviously the steering wheel is on the right hand side, uh, not on the left which obviously in France, if I was driving a French car, my steering wheel would be on the left. So how I'm sort of judging space um, and dealing with traffic and oncoming traffic in a UK car abroad. Let us know in the comments below um, if you've driven abroad, if you've got any pointers, if I miss out, if I miss out anything or you think there's anything that, that I should have added into this video, uh, then please do let me know. Um, and obviously um, you can help out the community. All right. If you like what you see here, if you if you're getting any value out of this video, obviously it's the usual stuff. Hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, and obviously that really really boosts the channel. So so we'd like that. All right. Thank you very much, and uh, let's get filming. And here we go. So obviously we drive on the right. Maybe not obviously. Do my mirrors here to turn left. It's a bit of traffic coming from my right hand side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us through town. Um, I'm going to deal with some roundabouts. Again I'm going to be doing the same stuff that I would do in the UK. Follow the same rules. So if I'm going to cross traffic I need to make sure that I don't make anybody slow down. Start edging forwards. Get a better view here. And off I go. At the roundabout, I'm going to turn left, so I'm going to do my centre mirror and my left mirror. The signal down for left, scan this pedestrian crossing. Looking at the vehicles now coming from my left, it's clear on my left, so I'm going to go. Coming round the roundabout, go past the first exit, centre mirror, right mirror, indicate right, and that will take me out in town. Driving on the right hand side of the road. I've got the aircon on just simply because it's so hot here. I mean, it's not as hot as it has been, but it's hot. Um, up ahead of me, I've got vehicles. I mean, they're a reasonable distance away. Again, scan that pedestrian crossing. A lot of the signs that you can see here, they're a little bit different to what we see in the UK. So that was a pedestrian crossing sign, but I mean, you can kind of work it out. Up ahead of me, I've got a, a no right turn. I've got another pedestrian crossing and you guessed it, a sign for a roundabout. I gotta work out where I'm going. I think at the roundabout, I'm gonna be taking the second exit. So I'm gonna do what I, exactly what I do. I'm gonna be following the road ahead. Um, so I'm going to be checking all three mirrors to make sure, see what's going on behind me. There's a guy behind, but he's not too, too close to me. I'm going to enter the roundabout as I go past the first exit, centre mirror, right mirror, indicate right to tell people I'm coming off the roundabout. New road, new mirrors. This time I've got a car quite close behind me. I'm going to pick up my speed. It says here 70 kilometres an hour. At the moment I'm doing about 55. I haven't got a camera for my speedometer, as you can't see that at the moment. Uh, again, vehicle behind me, not too close. Got a good distance between me and the vehicle in front. In fact, I can probably pick up my speed a little bit. I'm wearing my sunglasses simply because it's just so bright here. At the roundabout, again, I'm going to follow the road ahead, heading into a beautiful place called Uzes not been there it is stunning so again it's gonna be the second exit because there's a, a little turning here so I'm scanning that pedestrian crossing again looks kind of similar to what we have in the UK I'm gonna go past this first exit and then center mirror right mirror indicate right to make sure people know that I'm taking this exit again I'm scanning that pedestrian crossing checking all my mirrors again vehicle behind 
a woman walking along the pavement up ahead of me. I pick up my speed. Again, there's a pedestrian crossing, but there's nobody there. I'm checking all three mirrors as I drive on. Now, how am I positioning my car? If you look right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to position myself in a normal driving position, which would be approximately a meter from the curb. And I'll explain to you a little bit about how I'm doing that when I'm sitting on the wrong side or the right-hand side. So again, checking all three mirrors. I'm following the road ahead here. I'm gonna come around that roundabout, go past the first exit, center mirror, right mirror, indicate right as I come off. Now, ultimately, I sit right of center of my car. This is the center of my car right here. So when I look at the width of the road, what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm positioning myself to the right of my lane. So if the center of my lane was, would be approximately here, which is approximately where it is right now, then I should be in a good position. I've got a good sort of distance between me and the solid white line in the middle of the road and the curb. At the roundabout, again, I'm gonna follow the road ahead. So again, I'm checking all three mirrors, approaching the roundabout, looking to the left, because this is where the vehicle's gonna be coming from. There's nobody coming from there. Somebody who might pull out in front of me. So I just pause, center mirror, right mirror, indicate right. So I wanna make sure he doesn't do that because he came quite quickly to the junction there. So again, using the defensive skills, of me, it's my priority, but I can't guarantee that he's gonna give me way, right? I've got some people on the street, so again, I'm checking all three mirrors, and I'm just scanning that pedestrian crossing. There's nobody at that pedestrian crossing. I slot the car right down, just because these cars that are oncoming, center mirror, left mirror, as I come around this guy here, those oncoming cars pushed me a little bit to the right and closer to those pedestrians. So again, I'm thinking defensively. This guy's reversing out, so I'm slowing the car right down as I approach. I'm about to enter a one-way system. I can see there's a no left turn there, and there's a, a blue arrow that indicates, again, I'm checking all three mirrors here, but I've got to go to the right. It looks like we're gonna have merging traffic, so as I come through, I just look to my left, and I see a vehicle on my left. I'm gonna actually slow down and let him out because he doesn't look like he wants to give way to me at all. So again, defensively. Thinking about these things in advance, I mean, this is what defensive driving is. And I've been doing a lot of videos on defensive driving. In fact, I think one of the videos that's, um, I don't think I've put it out yet, but it's gonna be coming out soon, which is on defensive driving. Um, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but again, I'm giving you an example of how I do that. And, uh, and I'm in a foreign country. I'm now coming up through the town. Again, scanning that pedestrian crossing, can't see these stairs here, so that somebody could have been coming down. And there's people in the street, and obviously the rule is there are people in the street to take my time. I've got police here on the, on the left hand side. I'm going to come past through this beautiful walled section of the town. It's really medieval. I've got some pedestrians on the right hand side sort of strolling in the road. So again I check all three mirrors and I slow the car right down as I come past them in case they decide to step on the road. And I'm going to be following the road ahead here. So again I check all three mirrors to see what's going on. There's Okay, people walking across this pedestrian crossing again. And I've got a car park exit on my right hand side. All three mirrors again. There's a guy behind me, but he sort of paused. I've got people on this pedestrian crossing here, and he just decided to cross last second. So I bring the car to a stop. I could even say I could possibly have done that a little bit better. This guy is reversing into a space. I'm going to let him do it. There's an oncoming car and I don't really want to force my way around when that guy's coming towards me. So I'm gonna wait for this guy to just sort of tuck in a little bit and I'm gonna check all three mirrors and I'm gonna drive past him now. Same as I would do in the UK, there are parked vehicles on my right hand side so I'm trying to give as much space as possible. Again, I've just checked my mirrors as these people walk across the road. There's a vehicle behind me but hopefully not interfering with them too much. Uh, again, oncoming traffic is always a problem. I've positioned myself so that my left wheels are quite close to the center white line. I'm trying to give as much room as I possibly can to these vehicles on the right. Sharp bend, and there's a school crossing sign, which I don't think the kids are in school right now, right? I mean, we're in the middle of August. Coming around this sort of windy mountain road, and again, another pedestrian crossing, keeping my speed down. Now, this is kind of crazy. That is a 70 kilometer speed sign right now 70 kilometers an hour is approximately 45 miles an hour now there's a massive drop down here on my right hand side and a 
very flimsy barrier to stop me from going across. So I'm gonna think defensively on this one. And I'm actually doing about 40 to 45 kilometers an hour, not more than that, which works out approximately 30 miles an hour, maybe a bit less, okay? So what I'm doing is I come around in the corner. Again, I'm positioned on my side of the road and again, using that same tactic of want to sit right of center of my lane to make sure that I'm not too close. And there's a sign for a crossroads, which is coming up ahead. This is a bit of a sharp bend, so I'm checking all my mirrors. The guy behind me is definitely not close. As I come around this corner, making sure. And again, there's a little bit of a bend here and an oncoming car, so I don't want to come out too fast. Again, I've got this crossroads up ahead of me. That looks like a 70 national speed limit sign there, right? So I'm going to have to check that one up. This guy's turning right in front of me. I'll check out what that means. Double check it. Okay, so the road is opening up. So I check all three mirrors. I've got somebody behind me, but he's not that close. So I'm going to increase my speed. It did say 70 and above. So I'm now doing 70. There's a beautiful signage here. I've got a little um, separation in the road here. There's a filter lane. See the dappled trees. This is a this is a very typical French country road with all these trees on the right hand side, normally on both sides. In fact, you're going to see this as we drive up through this road. Again, I'm positioning myself to the right. I'm, my perspective is kind of on this right line here to try and give me loads of room. Again, I'm going to increase my speed here a little bit. Beautiful trees, beautiful countryside. Car coming towards me. So again, I position a little bit to the right just as he comes towards me. And I've got another sign here indicating Albre Incline. Okay, that's French, pretty bad. So inclined trees, I think that's what it means. So I need to be a little bit careful. So I check my center mirror and my right mirror as I position a little bit more to the right as these cars come past me. I've got no center partition in the middle of the road, right? So again, I create space by moving a little bit to the right as I come towards these cars, right? There's a sign buried here, it says crossroads. Okay, so I've got a turning on my left. I'm anticipating there's a crossroads up here somewhere. I see a turning on my right, so again, thinking defensively, I don't wanna rush past that. Again, behind me, the car is really not that close. I've got a good distance. You can't see that in the camera, but I've got a good distance. He's a good two, three, three seconds back, maybe even a little bit more. So he's driving defensively, or she. Up ahead of me, again, these beautiful trees. I've got another sign for a crossroad. So again, I'm checking all three mirrors to see what's going on behind me. And I can see this junction on the right-hand side and a motorbike. So I'm just gonna start reducing my speed. They do have a stop sign and they do wait, which is good. I got a sign here saying, Warning, horses, warning, another crossroads. They kind of use the same system over here, so obviously triangle signs, triangular signs, are warning signs, which I'm sure you all remember from your theory. As I come around here, again, another stop sign. Got a stables on my right-hand side, so that would be a pretty good reason as to why there are um, potentially horses in the road. Again, cars coming towards me, so centre mirror, right mirror, and again, I'm going to position myself to the right of my lane, so again, my perspective is going to be close to this broken white line on my right-hand side, this sort of verge line. Again, I'm moving towards the right. Again, blind corner here, and I had that warning of a slight chicane, so I'm going to take my time as I come around the corner, and that's a good idea because there was an oncoming car. Again, I check all three mirrors, and, and I accelerate, I increase my speed. All around me, there are beautiful vineyards. I've got this little sort of hill stroke. I'm not, I'm not going to call it a mountain. Maybe we call it a local mountain, but it's not really. It's just a hill. I've got a bend here, so again, I'm checking my mirrors. I'm reducing my speed in case someone comes flying around the corner. Again, position myself well to the right of my lane. I've got another sign that indicates a crossroads. I'm trying to figure this out because back there, there was crossroads signs, but that's a T-junction. they're a little bit lazy with putting their signs out properly, who knows. Um, 
it doesn't matter. I get the warning, I know there's a junction, so I'm gonna take my time. Again, center mirror, right mirrors, I position a little bit to the right. Again, there's nobody behind me. I keep checking my mirrors and there's nobody there. I've got a big truck, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna check my mirrors, I'm gonna start slowing my car down, positioning my vehicle as much to the right. It's not a truck, it's a big coach. Reduce your speed, give as much space as, pot as possible. Up ahead of me, it's telling me that the speed limit is going to reduce to 50 kilometers an hour, so I'm going to have to slow my car down. 50 kilometers an hour is just above 30. And there's a sign there, which maybe you saw, which tells me that the road is going to narrow. Again, that's a very similar sign to what we'd have in the UK. And I've got six passage, six pedestrian crossings as I come through this village. I'm going to take my time as I come through the village, just in case somebody decides to come flying out from the right hand side or in any one of these pedestrian crossings again checking my mirrors there's nobody behind me nice and tight and then I'm going to take this next road on the left Let's check my center mirror my left mirror just like I would normally do signal left scanning that pedestrian crossing there's no one coming on. I'm looking right up the road and just like in the UK I'm going to position myself to the right of my lane as I turn here to make sure that if there isn't a, a car coming the other way I wouldn't be in the way. I'm gonna come around the corner. I'm sure why my car beat there for a second. And I'm entering. I'm gonna pull up on the left here, center mirror, left mirror. I'm gonna park next to this van here. And come to a stop. That was just a very short drive to give you some guys an, an indication of what it's like to drive here in the south of France or to drive on the other side of the road, on the right hand side of the road using a right hand drive vehicle. Um, so hopefully you got value from that. If you like it, again, if there's any value for you as you go traveling abroad uh, or you're gonna drive abroad, again, dealing with roundabouts, you can see that I'm using a lot of the same routines that I would normally use in the UK. That's exactly what I'm doing over here. Same with my mirror work, same with my anticipation, my planning, reading signs. Uh, which is all kind of important. But that positioning as you're coming past vehicles, I'll highlight it in the video, hopefully you'll be able to see it, that it is kind of beneficial to move your car slightly to the right as you're coming past, especially on these sort of very tight, narrow roads um, where you've got no center partition line. Um, so it's definitely beneficial. So hopefully you get value out of that. Hit that like button, subscribe, and then you'll know when the next video is coming out. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit about this car. This is a great car. It's actually a car that I'm thinking that maybe I'm going to get at some stage uh, because I'm at the moment, I absolutely love it. This is a Golf. Uh, it's 150 brake horsepower, which is a little bit juicy. It's a petrol engine. Give you a little bit about what you can see here. So you've got this beautiful steering wheel. I've got to admit, I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, and here you've got a digital display. If I switch that on, uh, I've got a nice digital display right in the middle. I'm going to step out of the car so you guys can see it a little bit. And here we have the car. It's not the new shape, it's the one before. But again, I'm very, very impressed. I do like it a lot. Wheels are not too bad. There's the R-line sign. Now, I'm going to show you what she's, uh, what she's done here. I'm not quite 100% sure you're supposed to do this. Now, when you, when you want to travel abroad, we drive on the right-hand side of the road, but we drive on the right-hand side of the car, which means when you drive in the left on the UK, your lights sort of point forwards and left. Uh, which means we sort of highlight what's going on on the pavement. But here in France, that's a problem because your lights are going to be pointing towards oncoming traffic because you're driving on the right hand side of the road. Um, so what my mum's done, I'm going to show you what she's done here. Now, if you buy a kit, which is what you should do, you should be buying a kit. Um, you'll have these special little stickers that you put on your lights. Now, what my mum's done is she's put these little bits of tape to try and block the light moving to the right hand side. Now that may work. I'm not 100% sure if it works properly. I mean, that one looks a little bit better. It's definitely gonna be blocking a lot more of the light that's coming from the right hand side. But again, you should normally put the stickers that you would get in a pack. I'm gonna put a link in the description below of all the things that you do need to take with you. So if you're concerned about whether you've got all the right equipment, um, again, I'll list all that out so you know exactly what to buy. And there are plenty of reputable 
um, suppliers. You could go to either, I think, AA, I'm sure they do a kit, the RAC, I mean, find something that's suitable for you. Uh, but you need stuff like you need a triangle. You've got to have a triangle. So if you break down that, you can put a triangle 20 meters um, behind your car. Um, let's have a little look inside her boot, see what she's got, right? So she's got a little box of goodies here. Not quite sure she's got everything that she should have. This is some of the stuff that she's just brought with her, but that's her triangle right there. So you can see that. What else has she got? She's also supposed to have... What is this in here? Oh, bulbs. She needs bulbs. That's essential. That's part of that comes as part of the kit. And there should also be a gilet journal, what they call yellow jacket. So in case you do break down, you can actually be visible. I don't see them in here, so she's been a bit naughty. This is essential. If you get pulled over by the police and you don't have this stuff in your car, you can get yourself a ticket, you can get be fined, um, you're going to be in a bit of trouble. So uh, again, I'll put in the links below everything that you need in order to, to make sure that you're carrying. <laughs> Unfortunately, my mother doesn't seem to have bought everything that she should have. That's fine. She's 81 years old. She can get away with it. Can she? Let's close that up. So again, beautiful looking golf. Come around the back of the side. It's a nice looking car. I actually think more and more I'm going to get one of these. Get back in the car. Um, I actually called my insurance company um, and I can't remember the date, but I'll put the date, I'll put that information in the link below. Um, we initially needed, after Brexit, we did, you know, before Brexit, we didn't need green cards. This was something from days gone by, but now coming back here we needed green cards now when I contacted my insurance company they told me that I didn't need it anymore I think it had come to an end somewhere maybe the end of July um, and again I'll confirm that um, or I'll add a little bit more to this a little bit later so that we can that, that can be actually confirmed uh, when it comes to driving licenses you don't need to do anything with your driving license unless you're planning to stay here for a very long time. Um, if you're planning to stay here, you're going to need some other paperwork too because we're only allowed, I think, 90 days um, in any sort of three-month period. Six-month period, if that makes more sense. 90 days in any six-month period because of obviously Brexit now. We can't just come here and do what we want anymore. It's just the way it is. But most of us or most of you guys will probably just be coming here for a short holiday. If that's the case, your driving license, you don't need to do anything with it. You can just drive on your UK driving license. I'd heard reports that we needed to go to the post office and 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 do something with our license. So again, that's not that's not the case. But for now, that'll do. See you next time.